I'm Peter Block here in New Orleans at ACC 2019. On my left is Alex Voskovoynik from, believe it or not, Melbourne, Australia, not Russia. <laughs> but uh, Alex uh, has just done the alcohol AF study. You know, we deal with uh, having to figure out whether alcohol makes a difference in a lot of things. Heart failure, now atrial fibrillation. Uh, Alex, this is a, an important study. It gives us a lot of information about this combination of alcohol and atrial fibrillation or recurrence of atrial fibrillation. Tell me about the study. So thank, thank you for the opportunity. Look, it, so it was, a, it was a randomized controlled trial of 140 patients um, with a history of paroxysmal or persistent AF, but all in sinus rhythm at baseline. And we followed the patients up for six months. Um, there was one-to-one -one randomization. Um, 70 patients undertook uh, abstinence for six months, and the remainder, the remaining 70 were in the control arm. So let me interrupt, because I actually saw the slides before we did this, and you did remarkably well in getting the patients to stop drinking alcohol for that six months. Yeah, look, it was, it was very much a selected group. So if you look at the consort diagram, we had to exclude over 500 patients who were not willing to abstain. So it did leave us with a selected group of patients who were motivated. And I think that was the key, that the real focus of the study was, in essence, to look at what, um, how, how effective um, abstinence would, would be, rather than how effective doctors would be at getting all patients with Very AF good. who drink to... I so get that, that that's, the that, limitation. that's always tough. Okay, yeah. so what would you find? So, look, we found a few interesting findings. So, I guess in terms of our two primary endpoints, we did find uh, a lower recurrence rate in, in, in the abstinence arm by about 20% and a, a lower AF burden as well overall over the six-month period amongst the abstinence arm. And then also modest reductions in, in blood pressure, particularly systolic blood pressure, and a small, small amount of weight loss as well. So, I mean, if you're drinking a lot and you have PAF, sounds to me like it's probably not a bad idea to at least try stopping alcohol or at least cutting way back. Yeah, I think, look, I think that's essentially the main message of our study. If you, if you have a history of atrial fibrillation and you consume at least moderate amounts of alcohol, which we defined as 10 standard drinks per week or more, there are obviously different categories. Um, and I think, you know, the, the message to clinicians is take an alcohol history and um, a trial of abstinence may, may be warranted. It's not obviously going to work for everyone. AF is a very heterogeneous condition, yeah. so it's not necessarily going to work for everyone, but what we found in <clears throat> overall in this particular group was that there was a significant difference. There must be a group that has a lot of recurrence of PAF and goes back and forth and back and forth in whom this is particularly useful. I mean, the bottom line is they feel better when they're in sinus. Yes. So it might be worthwhile targeting that group, eh? Yeah, look, it's, it's, it's always hard to tease out. There, there are obviously patients that have clear alcohol-triggered AF, and many of those who already would have already stopped and may, would not have even been in our study. Um, there are certainly anecdotally there were some super responders where there were clear there was a clear improvement um, seen fairly early on, and then there were again a number of patients who also made no made, made no difference. And I think, but overall the study was 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 positive. Well, it's a positive study. You get a 20% reduction in paroxysmal AF. A lot of patients, I'm sure, will say, you know, for the 30 or 40 days. I, I like the alcohol better than the, I care about being, you know, waiting to come back to sinus rhythm. On the other hand, you've shown that there is a correlation, and that's not unimportant. Yeah, I think that's I think that's right, and I think exactly as you said, there may be some patients that respond better than others, and I think they'll know fairly early on. And um, there are also sec there were also secondary benefits, perhaps with improvement in systolic blood pressure control and a bit of weight loss. So there may be other benefits, but I think yeah, there are still a lot of unanswered questions. We know that. Um, other observate large-scale epidemiological studies suggest that mild amounts of alcohol may be beneficial for cardiovascular disease. So I think that's it remains a nuanced uh, situation, and I think we still need more data really to make recommendations overall. I think this is more about AF symptoms and, and burden than anything else, really. Okay, so for all the cardiologists out there with the paroxysmal atrial fibrillation patients, you know, get alcohol history. There's nothing the matter with that, yeah. and suggest it, and maybe your patients will indeed get better. Thanks, I think Alex. That's the right message. Thank you.